Hey friends, that is the sound of death for many a turntables. This is a Philips uh, automatic 406. I think it's a 406, not a 408. It's 406, 405, maybe it's 406. Anyways, I have no interest in these turntables. They're pretty cool though. I just bought this one because it actually had a Grace F9 cartridge in it when I bought it. And I'm like, you know what? That actually makes it well worth the price, which was a couple hundred bucks. And the Grace F9 cartridge itself is uh, with an original uh, stylus like it had. That's a, that's a four or $500 cartridge alone. So I'm just like, whatever. I, I'll, I'll buy the turntable from you. So uh, this one has, uh, it came to me actually working. It's not working now. Obviously it has a ground issue. Um, which may or may not have happened in shipping. Uh, I don't know. This is not the original um, dust cover. The <laughs> the restorationists in me, uh, there's multiples restorationists, um, multiple restorational per personality disorders, what I have maybe, I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> the restorationists in me uh, decided that we really wanted to get this thing fixed. I used the word we, yeah, the royal we. Uh, I really wanted to get this thing fixed. I thought it was a pretty cool little unit after I got it. I'd never really had any interest. I've never bought one. And so pretty cool little unit and they are pretty cheap. And you know, there might be a reason why. Maybe I'm finding that out right now. I don't know. Um, I'm a big Techniques and Pioneer and Sony fan. Those are really super reliable. Not really a Philips. Sanyo. Oh my God, I love Sanyo stuff. Sanyo stuff's pretty cool. But anyways, Philips, I'm sure they, uh, it says made in Germany. So I'm sure it was manufactured by somebody else. Maybe the, uh, maybe Dual. I don't know. I, I don't know. But anyway, so these are really cool. And you can hear just like some... It's just weird behavior, okay? So here's our hum. Now, keep in mind right now, I do not have it grounded, okay? I'm purposely trying to troubleshoot the hum. And the reason I don't have it grounded is this is my ground for my stereo, and this is my ground for uh, the turntable itself. So see what happens here, okay? It gets a little bit louder when I touch it. It goes down when I touch this, okay? So what happens when I put them together? It goes way down. Okay, very good. And by the way, these are the sacrificial KLH speakers that we have here. So uh, I would not do this with a good pair of speakers. In fact, you probably want to be doing this with uh, some kind of monitor um, and a resistor. So anyways, that all aside, we've got a turntable here and it's experiencing issues, okay, right? So the way I would go about figuring this out is I would take the ground wire from the stereo and I would poke around and see if maybe if I grounded this out, the um, arm, will it get better? It does, it's still there though. The problem is it's still there. Okay, so one other thing maybe we could try is if we put it into play and try and listen. Still there, but we do get sound. Okay, so this is weird, right? So we have a grounding issue somewhere in this turntable. Boy, that's awful. The unit actually works really well. I'm actually impressed by it. So let's go through some of the uh, the features on it to turn the hum off. All right, so it has auto start, auto stop. It does have auto return when it gets to the center of the record. It does have anti-skate. And what's really cool about this, this doohickey here, let's see here, let's, um, the uh, okay, so let's get our balance set. Okay, this dial right here is, let's, let's unplug it so that we can play with it. Ah, there we go. Good old two-prong plug, nice and thin, waiting for you to shock yourself with it, right? That old style. Okay, so let's balance this thing out here. Uh, let's turn off the anti-skate altogether. That'll help. 
Okay, it looks like we've got it balanced, okay? So it's like, it doesn't wanna go up, it doesn't wanna go down, it just wants to stay float. What's really cool is this dial right here, when you spin it, it actually sets the weight. So uh, now we're at two and a half grams. And you can see it does want to go down. So that's pretty cool. I like that. That's really interesting. Uh, when I got it, this weight was all falling apart. So I just tacky, tackied it back together. Uh, the lift is nice and slow on it. Really, really smooth. Uh, I don't like how this uh, is not a removable head shell. That's like kind of the, for me, that's one of the things that threw me is like, Man, some of the, I, I love to have extra head shells sitting around so I can slide them in and out. And these are not a dime a dozen. Uh, head shells are. Finding these, you can find them sometimes on eBay and, you know, they're, they're, not, uh, they're not cheap and they're very specific to this unit. So, you know, not a big fan. So, let's start it out here. Let's lower it. Let's make sure it's not locked. And the lock mechanism is pretty cool. It's just this little knobby right here, and it just locks it down. There's a little groove underneath the tone arm. And the tone arm is like, I think it's aluminum. It's really light. Uh, the speed control or tone control, whatever you want to call it, there. And then underneath this, it does have uh, the markings so that you can set your tone control. And then the base is like this nice sprung. So as the table gets jarred, it's not gonna mess with the, the turntable too bad. And let's see here, let's go ahead and plug it back in. And watch it start. This is like one of the longest, most delayed starts I've ever seen. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe some of the duels it's gonna take a way long time and think about it. All right, now it's gonna go. <laughs> it's like a century has gone by. All right, you hear it? Like absolutely rubbing against the record. So in one of the earlier takes of this video, it wasn't acting like that. Uh, in one of the earlier takes of the video, it was actually, it started working. Uh, so that helps me uh, determine that in fact, we are dealing with a grounding problem and obviously a needle problem now too, or stylus, whatever. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these units are just, <laughs> they're just a story on themselves. Uh, this one is turning into one of those. Now, look at <laughs> the weight came out of the thing. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is a piece of work. Okay, all right. There, that was the problem. The weight came out of the back. <laughs> it's just got a really unique personality that's that's what they say that's what they tell me okay all right so there are not very any good videos out there on how to take one of these apart so let's talk about that oh. <sighs> this one is probably going to the parts bin uh, not that I'll have another one uh, obviously I'm not a fan uh, so I'll probably actually just part it out next year and uh, call it good. Because this year, I'm really working towards getting everything listed. Okay, this is re it's really cool. It's belt drive um, with the, pla uh, the platter rest here. And then this platter is actually really heavy. Uh, I don't doubt, let's see. I think we're probably riding on two pounds. Two point seven. Two pounds, not 2.7, two pounds, seven ounces, 2.5, roughly. Okay, opening one of these up is uh, interesting. Okay, let's make sure we got everything locked down here. Let's take the cartridge out. This is a generic cartridge, by the way. This is not the F9. 
took that out immediately. All right. So to start this assembly, we have to loosen up the power cord. Okay. All right, there we go there. Got it, check. All right, so you're gonna give it a little bit of slack there. All right, or make sure you have a little bit of slack there. And we're going to open it back up. And then we are going to, uh, there's only, this is like this is one of the simplest disassemblies ever. It's awesome sauce. We're going to unscrew these two screws. And these are actually not screws, they're lock pins. And what they're doing is they're locking down two triggers that are managed by this here and that here. And now, we should, come on you bugger, we should be able to disassemble it now. All right, now we are underneath, which doesn't get us to point B. All right, so I'll explain why it's not getting us to point B here in just like two seconds. Let's turn this back on. We got our hum still, right? Got our hum. And let's poke around. Okay, it's still going. Still got our hum. It's reduced, but it's still there. It's enough that I wouldn't I would not sell this. So. Okay. Let's take this off. This might be the uh, part of the secret here. Alright. Okay. Alright, so here is here are lines coming from the um, arm. So they go up and through into the arm. That shouldn't be happening. You hear it? It's reacting to me touching it. All right, so you've got the four leads coming in for our sound, and we can touch these, and it's going to go freaking bat crazy, or it should. Okay, so those are probably our negatives. Okay, we're still getting sound, even though we've got the ground touching these. Chances are. Chances are that this is not a quick fix. And the reason I say that is, first off, partially uh, experience. Uh, partially, I don't want to put a lot into this because it's not worth that much. So uh, I am going to put my money on that we have lines that have worn and we have contact between some of the, the lines. And let's maybe look here and see what happens when we touch these. All right, let's use the ground wire and touch them individually. All right. Oh, that was a real, that was a big reduction. Still humming. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I bet you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just grounding these out. See that? That's the ground right there. It's supposed to be coming all the way up to the head shell. All right. So what we're gonna do is rethreading this, or putting a new line through it, and getting it all set up to where it can live another life is cost prohibitive uh, time wise so my recommendation is to scrap it let's get that seated back in there okay and move on to the next one so now you know how to take one of these apart though and 
Oh, I got a belt out of the deal too. Check that out. That's awesome sauce. So I got a belt and I got, wait a minute, what happened? Oh, it's still there. I just did have the volume down. Okay. <laughs> I've confused myself there. I'm like, holy moly, that's awesome. All right, let's put that right, right there. So that's good stuff right there. All right, this is now a parts unit. It's really sad, but it happens. And somebody else's turntable will go on living from the parts from this thing. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped you uh, potentially diagnose. Uh, the idea basically is that if you find out that the sound goes away, the humming goes away, after you start touching stuff, you got a ground that's loose somewhere. You just trace it back, figure out where it needs to be, and either just tether it back together or solder if you know how to solder. All right. Thanks for watching.